Okay, so each week we're diving into the big story of God, the story of you, me, and the God that we follow, and it's so helpful because of things like this. A little while ago, I missed a call from Rachel. Uh, I was doing something, and so when I looked at my phone, I had a missed call, and so I rang Rachel back, uh, and she says, oh, don't worry, I've already fixed it. And she explains that what happened was the Red Cross had rung her up to ask a question about what we were going to do with the refugee family that we love and that we work with. And she thought, well, she better check with me about that. And I wasn't available. So then she said to me, I didn't need to check with you, it turns out. I knew what we would do as St. Mark's. And so I rang her back and I said, yes. Because when you know the story of your team, when you know the story of your people, when you know the story of your village, when you understand the characteristics that always weave their way through the story of your team, then you are able to make decisions on a daily basis. You find yourself in the story. You're not shaken by things that might otherwise shake you and you know how to respond a little bit better. That's why the big story is so important. So this week we are back with our twin boys, the older one, the hairy one, the one who likes to go out hunting, Esau, the younger one who's not hairy and doesn't like to go out hunting but is very deceptive as a character, Jacob. One day their dad, Isaac, who's getting old, calls his elder favorite son, the hairy hunter, Esau, into the tent. And even though we looked at last week that Jacob had managed to snatch the inheritance or the stuff from his dad that should have gone to his older brother Esau, what he hadn't got yet was the blessing. That was what uh, Isaac the dad is going to pass on to the son just before he leaves this earth. So he says to his eldest favorite son, uh, son, my eyes are failing me. I need to go on a drive to see if they work. I don't know why he's suddenly gone Southern American. He says, look, son, I want you to go out and I want you to shoot some game and I want you to make me a delicious stew. Bring it back and then I am going to bless you before I die. So the older brother Esau goes out and does just that. Esau's mom, Isaac's wife, Rebecca, remember her, she hears this because they live in tents and so you can hear stuff. And she goes to her favorite son, the younger one, Jacob, and says to him, look, 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 I know you managed to get all the stuff off your brother, but you're not going to, you're going to miss out on the blessing. So why don't you just go and grab a couple of old goats? I'll whip them up into a stew. And whilst I'm whipping them up into a stew, we'll get another servant and we'll get them to make a covering for your neck and for your arms crazy plan whacked out plan surely this isn't going to work but they do it anyway so jacob gets a couple of goats rebecca makes a stew and they put a covering of goat's hair and skin on the back of his neck and on his arms he goes in to see his dad isaac and says hey dad it's me the hairy hunter i've come to give you your stew so that you can give me your blessing his dad's not crazy he's not stupid he's just old and so he says hold on a minute you sound just like my youngest son, Jacob. You don't sound like Esau. Come here. And so uh, Jacob goes a little bit closer, holding out this bowl of stew. As he takes it, Isaac, whose eyes are failing, he's really old. He feels the hand and the arms and the back of the neck, all the goat hair that they've plastered onto Jacob. And he's like, huh. I mean, it sounds like Jacob, but it feels like Esau. Then he brings him closer and he gives him a hug and he smells the clothes that he's wear that this son is wearing. He doesn't know that it's still Jacob wearing his older brother's clothes with some goat sellotape to the back of his neck. Why would anybody think that's what was going to happen? And so he puts all these pieces of puzzle together in his mind. I've got a hairy son in front of me who's gone out and hunted a stew just like I asked him to. And he sure smells like my son. My senses are telling me, even though the, maybe my ears are going too, even though he doesn't sound quite right, everything else says this is my son, my eldest son. And so he takes the stew and then he gives the blessing, which should be passed on to Esau, but he gives it to Jacob. He passes on the blessing from that God gave to Abraham, that Abraham gave to Isaac, and now he's passing it on to the wrong son. He's saying, you will be highly favored. You'll be blessed. The land is yours. The freedom is yours. The rule of the family is yours. May God bless you. May you rule over all you see. All this stuff pours out of this blessing. And then Jacob scarpers out of the tent really quickly, just before his brother 
Esau returns from the hunt with some wild game that he's killed, made a delicious stew, and comes in. And he says, hey, Dad, it's Harry Esau. I've come to get the blessing. And his dad is like, what? I just gave it to somebody else. I got nothing left. There's no way I can undo that. Ble- that was a legal contract. I can't undo it. And so the deception is complete. Jacob, the younger brother, has now robbed his older brother of all the stuff, all the inheritance and all the riches and the wealth and the money and the position and the status. But he's also robbed his brother of the blessing and the favor of his dad. So this is a weird story, right? But if you have ever felt manipulated or beaten unfairly, then you can find yourself in this story. If you have a dysfunctional family, you can find yourself in this story. If you desperately crave something and then when you get that thing, you realize that thing isn't enough, you can find yourself in this story. If you desperately desire the blessing of a father, you can find yourself in this story. There are so many ways that I can find myself in this story. And that's the point, that as we discover more of the story of God, we recognize ourselves in the story. We can spot the threads that weave through. We can see our strengths and our gifts and our skills, but also our weaknesses and the times we fail. And we can spot too that even in the craziest of moments, God's story, God's blessing. God's task of redeeming and rescuing and making all things good never somehow gets thrown off course.